that you can share with our crowd out here today? Uh, just stay down, stay loyal, um, stick to your craft. Um, even when times get hard, when a lot of people try to come and pull you and make you feel like you're a cash cow or you're the only person that can like set the tone on them. Just stay down, you know what I'm saying? Believe in God, you know, and, it, and it'll go far. We're gonna, we gonna laugh and have fun and pop bottles at the end. <laughs> As we learned from Kevin Durant just a few moments ago, fame opens the door to all kinds of different investments and partnerships. Uh, tell me a little bit about the ones that you're working on right now. Uh, we got a, a Martell, Martell Cognac. Um, I'm invested in that, uh, this water. We invested in this water, you know, big drip, what you call it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, finish line, like I said, the Imagine deal. I got a list in my pocket, but I ain't gonna whip it out and just hit it with it. <laughs> it's all good, we're gonna hit you with a little bit of, a little bit of that, but yeah. It's, but that's what I got going on. I got a lot of more investments about to come 2020, so I, I wanna hold it to the back a little bit before I make the announcement. T tell me a little bit about the importance of taking equity instead of just taking cash. Uh, you know, who, who was the inspiration for you in wanting to do that, and, and why do you continue that with your, with your partnerships to this day? Because it's a difference between being rich and wealthy. You know what I'm saying? Equity, you, you're going for the wealth. If you just want to be a face of something and don't want to get none on the back end, you want to be rich. So it's only two routes you can take. And I'm taking the wealthy. I'm already handsome, I'm just trying to get wealthy. What, uh, what do you feel your responsibility is as a role model in terms of creating generational wealth? Uh, especially in communities where the wealth gap is, is very extreme. Teach them, teach them young, teach the youth young, you know what I'm saying? When I was 15 and 16 and 17, I was just trying to like, I was focused on the wrong thing. I think we should like go back to the community and go back to the hoods and just teach them young, you know what I'm saying? So they can be focused early. Uh, well, I, I'm noticing that we're getting a lot of great questions coming in from the crowd, so I want to make sure we, we have plenty of time to dig into those. So. I'll start off with one here. Um, do you feel that rap and trap is becoming too oversaturated with rappers and producers? How can we overcome that saturation for quality music and content? Uh, that's on the fans. The fans gotta pick the music. Y'all the one who let like, all these people sneak in the game and, and be fake and not keep it real, so it's on the fans. <laughs> okay. Uh, next one. What? That there's one. Where's Culture Three? When's that happening? Shh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wait on it. Uh, here, here's a question from um, from one of our under thirty venture capitalists. He says, "What is the most important business lesson you've learned from the music industry?" Um. There she goes. She caught it. I'm on the masters. On your masters and just take your time. Don't try to run so fast and all the good glam and riches and the good, the weak, the weak money deals that thank you just to lock you in for a couple, couple years. Don't do that. Don't do shit like that. All right. Uh, next question. What are you doing to give back to your hometown, Atlanta, and to uplift the youth there? Um, yeah, A-Town, no side, that's how we do it. Uh, this is my third year, this is gonna be my third year. I give back to the community. I went back to uh, my high school I grew up to. Grew up and went to school in. I, I gave a lot of basketball players, the academics players, the girls basketball team. I redid their lockers. I um, did all their shoes. On my birthday, I go back and have this thing called Huncho Day where I invite all my celebrity football friends and they come and have a flag football um, game. We have an Easter egg hunt for all the kids down in the bottom field. We got buses coming to pick up all the kids from in the community that they can't get there. Uh, we had the radio stations and everybody involved. And every year I do that, so I celebrate my birthday with the, my community. Uh, on that note, another thing you're doing in Atlanta, um, 
you're you're buying back the house that you grew up in, right? Oh yeah, for sure. The same yeah. house we made for Sachin. Um, I bought it, and I'm trying to right now. I'm gutting it all out and trying to renovate it for my mom too, so she can be the landlord and no more taking shit from my landlord. <laughs> Uh, we got another one here. Uh, what shaped you into being the man you are today, and who were your greatest influences? What shaped you into being the man you are today, and who were your greatest influences? Um, my mom was my greatest influence. I just wanted to make her happy, and she she didn't really like put too many addresses on what I needed to do. She just let me just go out there and see for myself. So I really respect her for that. So I always just. Didn't want to disappoint her when I was out by myself knowing she wasn't watching me. Fair enough. Um, here's another really good one I think we can all take a lesson from. How do you manage your mental health and wellness while being an artist? <laughs> uh, how do you manage your mental health and wellness while being an artist? I just pray. <laughs> Pray and stick to my job and stay stay working. I'm always wake up every morning. I make probably like six songs a day. I probably got like a thousand songs in a hard drive. Just staying focused. You just can't sit around thinking about. It. Now you know idle mind is a devil playground. So we just you just gotta keep keep God first and keep praying, keep working. You, you mentioned in terms of the music business how important it is to own your masters. But what are the business decisions and advice that you would give to entrepreneurs? outside of the music business, uh, you know, in terms of how to build wealth and how to manage your money? I'm trying to manage, I'm managing my money too. You know, I got a lot of jewelry, you know, I got to like balance it. So, uh, that advice right there, it's just, like I said, man, keep working. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you, if you got like something that you know that generates great money, you got to learn how to put it back, of course, but, Right now, I ain't stopping. I'm on my third year. The major, major bag, major money. I just feel like right now I'm just putting it in places that I think it can double or triple. So right now I'm just I'm like an octopus. I got all my money everywhere, trying to like make it. Let's go. Uh, all three of you have flourishing solo careers as well. Um, how did you make that decision as a group and? You know, how did you kind of break it to them that, you know, you wanted to start doing that? Uh, it was a decision for everybody. We just, it's more money. <laughs> the spores, right? We're trying, to, we're trying to make it all the way to the top. Um, I just think it was, it was a time that we all just needed to tell our story. We started out rapping ever since we was 18 together. Offset, got married, had kids. You know what I'm saying? I'm not married yet, but I ho hopefully, um, and we just all growing up and we all wanted to tell our separate stories even though we're family and that's how we did it. Right. Who makes the most on their solo shows? Say it again? Who makes the most on their solo shows? This man crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, here's another good one. How do you find the balance between spending a lot of money on luxury items and investing that money to build capital and to build equity. Uh, how do you find the balance between spending a lot of money on luxury goods uh, and then in, versus investing that money to build capital and, and to purchase equity in companies? Um, you know how you like sit with your money and say, "Okay, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay for this." You all like list it. You gotta list it out. I kind of like how when you used to pay your light bill, you like, "Okay, I got." Two hundred dollars on the light, like five hundred, a hundred dollars on the light bill. I just, I do that now, but at a bigger scale. That's it. This is one of my favorite questions. Failures lead to success. What was your biggest failure or mistake, and what did you learn from it? Um, I think the troublemaking side. I felt like. When we first came in, I feel like we was invisible, couldn't nobody touch us. I feel like we had to show an image and not show an image, but like my lifestyle was just spilling out into the world of what we was getting in trouble and obviously was going in jail going to jail. I felt like we just need to 
set that aside and focus on another way to like make money. We was getting a lot of doors shut, a lot of colleges didn't want us to perform. And like we just had to sit down and have a have a group, have a group session and just say, man, if we want if we want to go to the top, we gotta clean this up. Uh, how do you make the decision to, to partner with the water company or to partner with Martel Cognac or any of this? I mean, I'm sure you get a lot of different offers coming your way. There must be a process of selection. Team, team, team. You gotta have a great team. You know what I'm saying? With, with me, I wanna have, you know what I'm saying? If it wouldn't be, be for me if I had no great team, like being coach, Danny, Real, and the good lawyers on my side. Um, let's get into a little storytelling. I think the audience is pretty hungry to, to hear a little behind the scenes of Migos. Uh, what is sort of what one of the, the more uh, entertaining anecdotes behind the scenes that the fans might want to hear? Something with the group that, you know, that, that perhaps uh, that hasn't been told yet, a, a tall tale. Uh, we got a documentary that's coming, so I want to just, I'd rather go for that. wait for that. It's on the way, they never seen like, our own um, lifestyle, so I got we got it in a documentary, and it's, it's going to be huge. Right now, we sit down with people, so it's going to be big. It's, and it's dropping on um, probably like January, All right. so that they may give a hint to what asked for Coach Three. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you do in your time off to unwind? Um, I, I record. <laughs> what she said. I don't smoke weed. <laughs> nah, but um, I, re I record, I just record. All day I record and just look for good business players that can make me some more millions. And I sit down and have meetings and I sit down and work and I sit down and have meetings and I sit down and record. And I have more meetings and then record. That's how, I, that's my life though. Like, that's how it been. I'm focused. What advice would you give yourself Young Quavo, if you could go back in time. You should have started doing this shit early. <laughs> but I got time. Yeah. Uh, what, what would you tell the audience members out there who, you know, maybe aren't in a position to uh, negotiate an equity stake in, in whoever they're partnering with? Um, how, how should they go about their business in a way that, you know, would have a similar impact on the bottom line? It still start with a small team. You build a small team and then your team will get bigger. You know what I'm saying? Trust your team and um, whatever grind it is. And if it makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Just don't be going out and spending and wasting money. Because sometimes it don't work. You know what I'm saying? But like, learn to like, learn to have a vision that speaks the future. Speaks to, speaking to the future, that connects with the future. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a plan that's, that's bold. And, and if it grows, and you got something going. If it don't, try something new. All right. Uh, here's another good one. People in the inner city that people in the inner city communities look up to you as a rapper and entertainer. How can we influence our neighborhoods to pursue entrepreneurship in a similar way? Uh, people in inner city communities look up to you as a rapper and as an entertainer. But how can we influence our neighborhoods to pursue entertainment, uh, entrepreneurship, and business? That's a good question. Um, it's 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 matter. It's, it's all a matter of who want to be involved. Like I, I want to give back to the community and show them my my inspiration and what I did and what I came from. So if I'm giving them an example of what I came from, I, I'm pretty sure that they'll be inspired. That's why I was saying like earlier, you come back if you come back and teach them earlier, they'll already have a path on what they want to be in life. Yeah. Yeah. That answer the question. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Sure. Have you ever doubted yourself or thought that you wouldn't make it? And how do you handle kind of the ups and downs? Um, you always gonna have doubts on the inside, but you always just make sure you don't show that to the people, you know what I'm saying? Even if you even if you nervous or discouraged, sometimes it's that's them the best moments. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of songs that's hits I didn't even like. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't fully comfortable, like hundred percent in it. Only bad moves, you know, I love bad moves. <laughs> But like the rest of the songs, I was just like, I don't know, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is smash, I don't know. And then every time, it, it, it was a hit, it was a hit. So sometimes when you feel like discouraged, them be the best moments. Okay. Uh, 
here's another one for the music music nerds out there. What music software did you use in the beginning of your career, and what would you recommend for up and coming artists? You don't want to know what I use. I started with a, a Toshiba laptop, and um, I had a I had a Toshiba laptop which was downstairs in my mom's basement, and we had this like wicker stand. It was like just small. It was a Toshiba laptop, and I had the mic in this closet, but it had like this uh, gymnastic pad in front of it. We nailed it up there, and I, we didn't have money for a mic stand, so I nailed the mic on the wall. And, um, and it was just the, the laptop and these little small speakers we had bought from Walmart. And they were little small black speakers. And, that's made, and, that, and that made Versace. And that had Coach K in my basement going crazy. So it don't matter how you start, you just you have, have to be ready. So for the last Forbes list, you guys were, I think, number nine. Ahead of you are some of the greats of the game, especially when it comes to business. Um, you know, out of those guys, Jay-Z, Diddy, uh, you know, Kanye West, who do you look up to the most from a business perspective? And, you know, are there any that you particularly try to model your business career after? Jay-Z. You know, he's very solid, you know what I'm saying? Very quiet and, and make great business moves. That's how I like to do it. I like to just keep all my shit solid and move quiet and hit hard. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, what do you think he does differently? Uh, how does he move that, that has enabled him to become hip hop first millionaire? Move like a boss. <laughs> Uh, what is your pre-game ritual? Before a concert. Uh, most definitely, uh, I pray. I pray for sure. For sure, for sure. Well, I hate to say we do say a prayer every time, no cap. No cap me, I'm not lying. Uh, keep the questions coming, guys. We got about five more minutes. Uh, these are great. Uh, okay, a few more. What was your first big purchase? Uh, my mom. My first big purchase was my mom Benz, and I bought her a house. Then I bought my house. Uh, how has social media expanded your career? Oh man, that's the best thing that ever happened to our career. Best thing. Happen to anybody that's trying to like build a, a, a brand. It's just it just gets to reach the masses faster than faster than you got to go outside and just you know hand out your CD. So the internet is crazy. Where do you see hip hop ten years from today? Um, the number one genre. I, th I think it's already there. I know, but it's still. <laughs> still, all right, very good. Uh, okay. Uh, you got some regular big shot? What are you talking about? <laughs> Ashley them take our partners, so whenever they want to lock in, we're going to do it. <laughs> Can you envision yourself one day owning an NBA team? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what is the best piece of advice you can give? Uh, the best piece of advice you can give to students who aren't necessarily yet in the business world, but moving in that direction. I can't answer that question. Uh, what do you think of the dad coming back? The dad? your very first million dollars, what would, what would you attribute specifically to that? How did you make your first million dollars? Was there a song that, that put Versace you in the Versace made my first million dollars. Versace, Versace. <laughs> After that, we was, uh, it was uh, Bad and Bougie, we made some more millions. Okay. That's when what, we made some millions. We, we went and did, um, we did, did an incredible tour, we made some more millions. We did the Drake and Migos tour, we made some more millions. <laughs> Yeah. If you weren't in 
different music today, what would you be doing instead? Uh, yeah, sports, hopefully. Out of the way. Uh, how do you combat negativity and haters? Uh, I'm not focused on that. I'm listening to that shit. No negativity. We don't got no negativity. Um, we all we all speak positivity. We all speak positive to our brothers. Um, we just don't like hating shit. Yeah. All right. Uh, to to I see the girl in the bed. Listen. We got a serious question here that's getting a bunch of upvotes. Um, how are you helping to reduce the over-sexualization of women in hip-hop? I got, um, actually I'm the only boy, so I take care of my ladies and I love my mom, I love my sisters. Um, I only got one uncle, my grandmama, she had, uh, women. So I know how to treat my women, I mean, I'm gonna treat them real good, I take care of them. And anything my sisters, my mama, and I, if I see somebody out there, I, I treat them like my family, so I don't play like that. Uh, another note on the on the family side of things. Do you ever pull the uncle card on takeoff? <laughs> All right. Well, unfortunately, we are. We are winding down, but I want to give you the last word, Quavo. Uh, any, any parting wisdom for our, our audience of entrepreneurs out there be before we call it, come to a close? It's, it's his last word. <laughs> any, any final wisdom for the entrepreneurs out there before we close the session?